everyone, it's me again, and welcome to Faith's Faces. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name's Faith Grenade, and I put makeup videos here on YouTube. You should subscribe! And what you've stumbled into today is Faith's Faces, which is usually a get ready with me or a makeup tutorial, which this one is today. So, the last couple of kind of weeks, I guess, uh, or the last couple months, maybe even, I have been completely uninspired. I've had no energy to do makeup at all. I just, I've, I have had a lot of personal shit going on, a lot of personal tragedies happening in my life, and that has led me to be utterly unmotivated to do anything related to makeup. But uh, I did some retail therapy uh, not long after these tragedies occurred and those orders started coming in, including the order of the Jeffree Star Androgyny palette. Okay, I already know I'm gonna get some, some heat because people don't like Jeffree Star. I get it, believe me. Jeffree Star is an asshole. I don't really know if I would be his friend in real life or not, um, because quite honestly, he could just be playing a character for all we know. Um, but at the end of the day, for me, his liquid lipsticks are the best I have ever tried, and I've tried many of them. So the search is on for a new one because I know people don't like Jeffree Star, but in the meantime, I am a makeup artist. That is my business. That is what I do for a living. And because of that, quality of product supersedes quality of person. You know, I buy from Jeffree Star on occasion. I don't do it nearly as much as I used to, but um, I, you know, I bought the Beauty Killer palette, which was the first palette he came out with. And I was not really too much of a fan of that palette. There were colors there that creased on me, which is the first time in a really long time that I've had any uh, eyeshadow that has creased on me. Ever since I found eyeshadow primer way back in the day, uh, eyeshadow hasn't creased on me, but one of the eyeshadows in that particular palette did, and one of them burned my eyes. It was just, I mean, it was a little bit of a hot mess, but there was some promise there, and I definitely saw the potential for something really good. So when he first, you know, sneak peeked this palette or announced that this palette was coming out, I, before I saw the colors, I was like, mm, maybe, maybe not just because I had had some negative experiences with this last palette and I was afraid to get burned again. But then I saw the shades and I was like, okay, I need this. You know, it's, it, it's me all over. It's a neutral palette, but it's a different take on a neutral palette. And I hadn't been this inspired by something in a really long time. So I went ahead and ordered it and decided to go ahead and create some looks with it and see if it's any better. So far, so good. I haven't, you know, I've been running into a lot better experience with this palette, but I've only used it once, so I'm going to keep using it, and maybe you'll get a review in the future uh, if you guys are interested in that. But when I first looked at this palette, there were a few colors that stuck out to me, but the main thing that I sort of thought of, the first word that came to mind was bruise because there's a lot of colors in here that remind me of bruises. Like you got androgyny here, fetish, military poison, swallow, dominatrix, uh, charm. All of these remind me of different stages of bruises. So I was like, why not, for my first look with this palette, create an eye look inspired by bruising? Another disclaimer, since this intro is already four and a half minutes long. Another disclaimer, I am in no way fetishizing or glamorizing domestic abuse, nor am I fetishizing or glamorizing violence in any way. I have been a practicing pacifist for damn near 20 years. I do not condone or fetishize or respect violence against anybody at all. <laughs> that's, that's a thing. Um, this is just me being inspired by colors that are found in bruises, which bruises can be obtained in a number of different ways. But, um, 
yeah, this, I don't want anyone to think that I am glamorizing domestic violence. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, I'm gonna have some resources down in the description box below. Uh, please get help. Um, you know, you can escape this and there are better things out there for you and you absolutely 110% deserve them. With all of these disclaimers out of the way, if you wanna know how to get this grungy, dingy editorial I hate saying grunge because this isn't grunge, but it kind of is, but it kind of isn't uh, <laughs> bruise inspired look, then just keep on watching, baby. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. This is gonna be one of those looks that not everyone likes, but <laughs> I don't care, I enjoy it. Um, so let's get bruisey with the androgyny palette. Why hot pink? Like the, the box, the outer box that this comes in is a gorgeous, burgundy like brown red color with gold accents it's beautiful and then you open the box and hot pink and faux snakeskin i'm just like this is probably i mean i, I know it's part of jeffrey's brand and i understand like where he's coming from from that angle but this is probably some of the tackiest packaging that i've ever seen and then you open it up and there's this like gorgeous filigree thing around the outside and imagine how pretty and put together that would have looked if the outer packaging was like that same burgundy color i think that would have just been way better but that's just me you know the packaging is at the end of the day, not as important to me as the colors inside. First, I'm going to take Charm, this lovely orangey color. It looks like it has like a satiny finish, but it shows matte on the eyes. Uh, so don't worry about that too much, but I'm just washing this into the crease and I'm carrying it up near the brow in the front. And what this is gonna do is it's going to angle the eye downward almost and give kind of a forlorn look. They used to do this a lot in the 20s um, because it was all about the, the sad eyes. So we're gonna do that a little bit. Fun fact, it's actually been a really long time since I've gotten a bruise. I do not bruise easy, guys. It takes a lot to, to get me to have a bruise. I think the last time was when I like legit fell on my ass. Cool, so that's down. Now let's get weird. Uh, we're gonna take our e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. This is a must-have for any makeup kit And I'm gonna take the shade military, which is rapidly becoming my favorite shade in this palette. I adore this color I've been waiting for someone I'm just gonna push this onto the inner part of the lid. I've been waiting for someone to come out with a color like this for years and I was just like You know I because I see a lot of olive greens, but very rarely do I see like a matte khaki green and this is just exactly what I was looking for. So then on the outside corner of the eye, that's when we're gonna get really deep and dark, like a really fresh bruise, like within the first couple of days, it's like a blue purple color. So I'm gonna take Poison, which is this guy right here, this kind of deep teal color, which is pretty nice. And I'm gonna pat this on the outside edge. We're kind of keeping this pretty tight because um, we're gonna blend this later and we want that space in the center because uh, that's where the purple's gonna go. And we're gonna be winging this out, so I'll get to that in a second. But uh, for now, I'm just trying to diffuse the harsh, e the harsh edges, <sighs> harsh edges of poison out a small bit and sort of blend it up into our charm color and then I'll go back in with my shader brush and kind of fill in any of the gaps where there isn't color and I want there to be color. We're gonna add the purple and we're gonna take Androgyny, which is this shade right here. It's pretty much the exact same color as the lipstick, which is cool. Uh, we're gonna take that and we're gonna tap it up the center here. And I like this because it's pigmented enough that it looks like we put it there on purpose. You know, it's not, it doesn't look like an accidental, like, oops, this turned into purple. No, this is definitely intentional, definitely supposed to be here. And it's just gonna give us that bruise, fresh, like two day old bruise effect on the outside edge. So we're kind of starting with a new bruise and working into an old bruise as we get further in. I'm gonna take this same brush. This is, I haven't been saying my brushes. Uh, this is the Real Techniques Bold Metals 203. 
really good detail crease brush. I'm going to put that back in poison, just tap a little bit on the tips of the brush, and I'm going to start kind of working it out here. Starting kind of on the outer corner, and then as I run out of product, I'm going to run and wing this out. Yeah, so we're going to wing this out. And don't worry if it looks a little too intense, you can always use a makeup wipe to clean it up later. But for now, I'm just trying to angle this outward. And give it a little bit of uh, an interesting shape. Lower lash line. See, this is, this is surprisingly quick. Um, I'm only 12 minutes into filming and I'm already almost done with the eye. I'm going to take Fetish, which is this deeper kind of brick red color. Although it's looking a lot more fire engine-y on my eyes, but I'm going to run this on my lower lash line all the way around. And this is going to be, again, more along the lines of that fresh bruise color. So when you first receive the injury, there's a lot of irritation and there can be a lot of redness. So we're going to put that redness in. I'm going to take poison, just a tap, and I'm going to run that over top on the outside here. I kind of went light on the red on the outside just to make it easier for the teal to blend into this. It's going to create kind of a weird greeny brown fucked up color, but that's okay. We're going to move inward and I'm going to dust off my brush here just looking like it's leaving a bruise on my hand too. Uh, and I'm gonna do androgyny, I think is what I use next. Ugh, I'm so bad at remembering what I did. Um, and I'm gonna move that inward. And I'm kind of going at the base of the red and moving up. Blending it into that teal mix we've got going on out there and that's just gonna bring a little more purple to the party. Now we're gonna dust off that brush again don't have to dust it off completely, because if it's muddy, it's fine. Uh, and I'm going to dip it into Charm, which is kind of this yellow-orange shade. And I'm going to go below the red, just on the inside corner, moving a little into the purple, but not quite all the way. Uh, for the liner, I decided to use a couple of different things. I'm going to take the NYX Faux Black Liner in the shade Oxblood. This is the lighter of the two reds in that line. I love these for the colors. Like, once they set, they set down pretty hard. Like, they don't smudge out too terribly easily. Um, but the colors are amazing in this line. I love them. I have three of them. I have this one. I have the darker kind of brown red color. And then I have the dark olive color. And I love all of them. They're amazing. Uh, so I'm going to take this. And I'm going to run this into my waterline from the inside corner, working my way outward. Oxblood's more of a pink-based red, so it's going to give that kind of irritated eye effect. Now we're going to take the uh, L'Oreal Silkissimi, Silkissem, Silki, Silk, Silkissem, Silkissimi. I'm going to start on the outside edge and sort of blend that into the red just to give it a grounding kind of a place to start and then I'm going to tight line with this and lament that I did not sharpen it before doing so man if you have blue eyes this is going to look badass um, green eyes too and brown eyes fuck like any eye color this is going to look fucking badass and people are going to be like she's crazy she doesn't know how to do makeup and I'm going to be like yes I do Oh, and the brows I already did. Uh, for brows, you just want something kind of standard. Um, I tend to, I tend to go a little more on the thicker side just naturally. So I do bold brows. You don't have to do bold brows with this if you don't want to, but I find it balances out the darkness and the smokiness uh, really well. Now for mascara and lashes. Uh, mascara, I'm just going to use my standard L'Oreal telescopic. Uh, carbon black. I like this because I have short lashes, but they're thick, so it gives me the length I need. And then for falsies, 
I want to use something, this is going to be boring because these are what I use all the time, but I'm going to use my Kiss Number 11s. They're basically like the Ardell Demi Wispies, only maybe a little bit longer. Um, I like them because they give me definition and they give me length, but they're not blocking the eyeshadow work, which is my favorite work to do in makeup. So I am going to put my mascara on and slap a pair of these puppies on my lids and we will be back to do pretty much everything else. I'll probably do my foundation too, but I'll be back after all that's done. Got my foundation on, got my powder on, concealer, all that good stuff, that's all done. So now we can move into contour, because I've been told that the shade Safe Word from this Androgyny palette makes a good contour color. It's a nice little neutral brown, so I figure, yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Gonna tap the living heck off of it because it is an eyeshadow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with that. If you're slightly darker than me, it probably won't work in that particular application, but um, makes a nice little subtle contour. The Lunatic Labs contour palette. Favorite contour palette of all time ever. It's in my kit on a perpetual basis. I'm going to take Mm, this guy, just medium cool. It's pretty much my favorite shade in this palette. And I'm gonna deepen up my contour with that. Cool, contour is done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dust off my bake using my Real Techniques Bold Metals 103. This was limited edition and I don't know why because it is perfect. So now, bronzer. I am gonna probably put a little bit of tantalizer bronzer on. I'm trying not to nick my splinter. Um, but I am gonna pop on just a touch of bronzer on the tops of the cheeks. My Mary Luminizer by The Balm, which I haven't used in a minute just to get that glow going. Now for lips. I've been kind of lost as to what to do for this look for lips. I could do a black, I could do a deep teal, I could do a nude, uh, I could do like a taupey gray corpse nude. Like there's a bunch of different options. Oh, I could do a brown. That would work well. Ugh, guys, I'm so depressed. I feel like my dominatrix might finally be drying out. But I love the way this color looks with this look. It sort of balances everything. It's a strong lip, so it balances out the strength and the smokiness in the eyes without taking it over. It sort of takes a back seat, lets the eyes do the talking, but it still says, hey, I'm here too. So without further ado, let's do some awkward posing. Awkward posing. Looking down, looking forward, looking fierce. I hope you guys found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining. If you did, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt, you know it deserves it. And if you wanna see more from me, got a couple options now. You could click the videos on either side of my head to binge if you're bored or bummed out. Or hey, you could hit that button that looks like my face and subscribe and become a member of the faithful today. I put out new videos every Sunday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Toodles.